Well, at 7 o'clock, why don't we get started? Uh, I'm Pedro Castillo. I'm vice chair of the Pajaro Valley Cesar Chavez Democratic Club, and will be the moderator this, uh, this evening. Uh, the way that we'll do this uh, endorsement form is, first of all, you have to be a member of the club to vote. You have to be a member of the club and have been to two meetings within the calendar year. So from September, is it September to September, or yes. July to July? Mm -hmm. July to July. So within and one year. July to July. To July to July. And if you don't have a ballot, uh, Rosa has the ballots, and she'll check your attendance, and she'll check that you paid. Uh, you can pay tonight if you want to be a member. Uh, the applications are at the table. If you, if, if you want to re re become a member, if you if you paid if, uh, after July, then you're okay. But if you paid before July, you, you have to pay again. <laughs> And we're doing first the uh, the Watsonville City Council. We have three candidates in three different districts. And then we're doing the uh, uh, the Santa Cruz County Board of Education. And then we're doing the supervisor in District 4. Uh, you'll have uh, one, one vote for each position. You can vote yes for the candidate or no endorsement. So when you get to that, uh, time at the very end you'll be able to, to vote for that um, after all presentations then uh, you can uh, start to uh, to vote uh, the tally committee will be composed of Rosa and Lupe in the back uh, Daniel Dodge jr. is the timekeeper uh, there'll be five questions uh, each candidate is allowed two minutes uh, and then for four questions and then for the last question is one minute summarizing one minute and then at the end we'll have ten minutes of questions from from the audience uh, if you have any questions um, a candidate is, is endorsed if he or she receives the highest number it's 50 percent plus one so it's not like the Santa Cruz Democratic Central Committee where they ask for 55 or 60 percent, but here it's just majority. majority. Uh, minimum of 50 percent plus one vote. Okay, we'll first start with the City Council. Uh, Daniel Dodge, who's running uh, for District 5. five. <laughs> Eduardo Montesino, who's running for District 4 and Lowell Hurst, who is running unopposed for District 3. 345. Daniel Dodge in District uh, 3 has an opponent. Uh, that person was emailed and invited, and that person has a prior commitment. Uh, Eduardo Montesino also has an opponent, and that person was invited. And I got this long email. Uh, don't have to go into it, but that person is not going to be here. His choice. Uh, the first question, and we'll start first with, with Daniel, uh, and then we'll go from Daniel, Eduardo, and Lowell, and then the second question, we'll start with Eduardo. First question, Daniel. So that's how many minutes? Two minutes two for minutes. this. Okay. They don't have to take two minutes. If they can do it less, that's fine. That's sure. But not more than two. <coughs> uh, Daniel, how long have you been a registered Democrat, and who has endorsed you for this office? Um, good evening. Well, welcome. Uh, my name is Daniel Dodge, Sr. I'm City Councilman in District 5 of the City of Watsonville. Uh, I've been a Democrat uh, since uh, since uh, <laughs> I was one of the first people to turn, when 18-year-olds got the right to vote in this country, I was one of the first people to be able to, at that age group, to be able to sign up, and I've been a lifelong Democrat since then. Uh, I've been supported by State Senator William Monty, Assemblyman Luis Alejo, uh, locally attorneys Ben Rice and Bob Katz, uh, mayors and city councilmen throughout the Monterey Bay Area, uh, Councilman Ken Talmadge, uh, excuse me, Ken, Councilman Ken Talmadge of Carmel, Mayors Ralph Rubio from the city of Salinas, Mayor Stephanie Harlan from the city of Capitola, um, Robert Rivas, 
Board of Supervisors, and of course, our, our Mayor, Karina Cervantes, who you know, I consider a very good friend, and I'm proud to have her support. Um, I've also been uh, supported by members of my community. Um, we were able to be able to sign my petition. Locals, uh, Barbara Robles, Julian Posadas, Irma Austin, people that actually can vote for me uh, are supporting me. So uh, I'm honored to be able to, I've also received the LGBT uh, Alliance of Santa Cruz County, the Building Trades of Santa Cruz and Monterey County, along with the operating, excuse me, along with uh, IBEW, which is the International Brother of Electrical Workers, and of course, my brothers and sisters from the United Transportation Union. So thank you for allowing me to be out here tonight. Thank you. Eduardo, how long have you been a Democrat, and who has endorsed you for office? <laughs> um, I've been um, a Democrat just four years, I, th um, I think. Um, I was um, barely, uh, actually became a citizen in 2006. It hasn't been, it hasn't been that long. I was an, an immigrant. I came here to, this, uh, to the United States when I was eight years old. I've been, I was first of the dreamers, now that we're, they're so-called dreamers. Um, and but I but I got um, be a, got a pathway to be able to be a citizen, and I've and I've been exercising that right, and I've been voting every every time. And I, this opportunity came uh, came to me four four years ago, and and, and where, where else could I enjoy by the power of Valley? Um, I've been endorsed by one of the founding members of this uh, of this club, his assembly member Luis Alejo, um, assembly assembly member Mark Stone. Also been um, endorsed by our supervisors, um, Sat Friend, John Leopold, Neil Grunity. Um, been endorsed with uh, multiple mayors. The mayor, of, uh, the mayor of Capitola, um, uh, Mayor of Capitola, Sa Sam Story. The mayor of Santa Cruz, Lynn Robinson. Um, the, uh, the mayor of the mayor of Watsonville. Cannot forget her. Get her. <laughs> <laughs> Over endorsement, uh, Karina Cervantes. Um, I've been endorsed with a lot of group, but uh, uh, the biggest group that that uh, especially at this time enticed me enticed me to run again is my family. Um, it was it was hard years, especially um, with uh, having three kids and and trying to make uh, trying to make ends meet and trying to trying to keep up with all their activities. But they're uh, wholeheartedly. Even my even my little eight eight year old and almost nine said, "Papi, you got to run again." So um, that's the greatest support I can have in in, in this in this round. So I'm just looking for your uh, for everyone's support here. So thank you very much. Lowell, how long have you been a Democrat, and who has endorsed you for office? Well, that's a really good question. <laughs> you know. <laughs> I wasn't able to register to vote until I was 21, and that was kind of the law back then. And, and so I registered then as a Democrat, and I've been a Democrat all that time. No, no independent stuff, no decline to state, no Republican uh, baggage on my tail. I've been a, a Democrat all my life, and I'm going to continue to be a Democrat all my life. So as to who's endorsed me, I think about two-thirds of the people in this room have endorsed me <laughs> at one time or another. And, uh, you know, I've earned the uh, support of a number of uh, prominent folks in the community. But most importantly is uh, my family, as Eduardo uh, indicated, was his case as well. But these two gentlemen have endorsed me, and I think I'm in good company there. Uh, you know, my friends, my neighbors, I, I don't have an opponent this year, except for two people. The, the guy named Apathy, and I've defeated him before, uh, and the person named Indifference. And Indifference I'm still working on. So I'm going door to door and people say, oh, you're really nuts, Hurst. You know, you don't have to do that stuff. <laughs> but, you know, that's what I do. And, uh, and I get to hear firsthand complaints and, and I, hear, I, I get to have people say, you know, you suck, Hurst, and that job sucks too, and you mess for each other. And so I take that as an endorsement. <laughs> I'm having a, a very good time at uh, my uh, experience of election, and I'm glad to continue, and, and uh, hopefully I'll gain more support, and that uh, eventually we'll have, we will be able to defeat apathy and indifference. Thank you. <laughs> the second question was done with Eduardo. What are your qualifications for this office? 
And why should the Pado Valley Cesar Chavez Democratic Club endorse your candidacy? I think some of the, my biggest qualifications, especially even the last time, is I'm raising three three young kids here in the Pajaro Valley, and and that uh, that puts me um, at the forefront of, of fighting for big issues, working families here in the community. Um, I've been I've been a good steward. I've created programs. I've created the youth council, the, the first Watson Youth Council here in the community. Then it, uh, then it got replicated here in Santa Cruz which I, I always throw at the, at the mayor, so we did it first. Um, but, uh, but uh, we ran a, a summer youth program um, with, with a, a few young folks in the summer that, 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 uh, that it's, it was only um, uh, a few kids, but those kids actually learn so much and they're gonna take and they're gonna take on their siblings, they're gonna take on their friendships. And some of the comments that came around were 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 saying now if you're connected to the community, now I now I know I'm gonna volunteer. So having having um, uh, done those things and having more ideas to put forward, I think qualifies me and hopefully you guys will finish. Thank you very much. Lowell, what are your qualifications for this office? And why, why should the PVCCDC endorse your candidacy? Another good question. I think I'm qualified in the fact that I've been a uh, city councilman for 13 years, mayor twice, served on a number of boards and commissions throughout the community, attended thousands and thousands of meetings, taken public input and given a little bit back on occasion. I'm here tonight to ask for your endorsement, and I really do want your endorsement because it, it helps validate the, the process of democracy, of participation, of opportunity for everyone to move forward together. I'm here to give my experience, my, uh, my, my what knowledge I know about uh, city government and municipal work. I'm here to ask for your support and uh, try, try and bring some, bring some folks together. So I'm, at, I'm, I'm here to uh, fight apathy and indifference. Remember those two? And try and make a difference in the community and focus on, uh, you know, I, I think some people know I was an educator for 32 years in the uh, local school district. And, uh, and it hadn't been for uh, this organization, the, the Powell Valley Federation of Teachers, you know, I might not have uh, ever been in, uh, in government. So I owe them a debt of appreciation. So I want to thank Francisco Rodriguez uh, uh, emerging from his office for his uh, long-term support and endorsement as well, and the endorsement of uh, the IEW and uh, uh, Assemblyman Alejo, who's uh, here, People Power, United Transportation Workers, the uh, International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers, and thank you very much. Daniel, what are your qualifications for this office, and why should the Pado Valley Cesar Chavez Democratic Club endorse your candidacy? Well, <coughs> you, you know, I, I, when I was thinking of all the wonderful things that, that the other members of the city council were being able to communicate to you, I have a long list of community experience in, in a variety of different roles. Um, I first ran for public office uh, before the internet in the last century, <laughs> <laughs> when I think Luis Leo was still in junior high school. <laughs> and, and I was proudly endorsed by the member, by the man whose name this club is named after. I was endorsed by Cesar Chavez in 1989 when I first ran for political office. And since that time, um, our community has changed, the county's changed, uh, the economics of the region have changed. But here in Watsonville, there's still a lot to be changed. So I want to be part of that. I've been part of that. I've been able to do the route that was put, placed in for me because at that time, uh, there was a lot, a lot of doors that were opened up for people that have a variety of different opinions. I was a founding member of the Pajaro Valley Community Trust, Health Trust. I've been a two-time chair of the Latino Affairs Commission, two-time chair of the Planning Commission of the City of Watsonville. 
I've been a chair of the Santa Cruz Metropolitan Transit District, the chair of the Local Agency Formation Commission, that called, it's called LAFCO, and currently I'm also a member of the Regional Transportation Union. But my, I think my biggest qualification, as Eduardo was allu 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 alluding to, I don't know how you're not to spell that, so I don't know why I'm using that word. <laughs> <laughs> Two L's. Is that when, when I became elected and I walked into City Hall that first time as being an elected official, I brought my granddaughter with me. And I've been, I was, it was a powerful moment for me to recognize that I've been able to create leadership amongst women, young women in this community. And I'm very proud of that fact, and I will continue to open doors for all those that need those doors open. Thank you. Thank you. We'll start with Lowell. What are the main issues in this campaign? I think everybody knows what the main issues in this community and this campaign are. Jobs, economic uh, development, prosperity, public safety, and uh, the last and probably one of the most important issues is the education of youth. And that's, that's a solution as well as a, a, an issue in the community. And if we can bring a better uh, networking with uh, educational institutions, everything from preschool to uh, the university, I think that that will be a, a feather in everyone's cap and, a, and, a, and an attribute to the community. Clearly, we need uh, more economic opportunities in, in the city more jobs, uh, maybe a friendlier or a better way to do business, and we need to gain the respect of the uh, County Board of Supervisors and our friends in the North so that we have a, a table that we can sit at and, and be uh, uh, equals among our, our peers in the Monterey Bay. And so there's lots of other issues too, you know, let's don't forget the needs of seniors and the disabled and, and those who were less fortunate than us. But if we can work on education and we can work on economic development and we can work on jobs and bring more prosperity to our community, I, I think we'll solve a lot of problems. Thank you. Danielle, what are the main issues in this campaign? Well, I, I wanted to be able to concentrate on, on, on a couple of issues in particular, issues that I've been able to work on as being uh, as, as an elected official, and, and not necessarily uh, one, two, and three. I, I believe that we need to be able to continue uh, to uh, be able to prioritize public safety. We recently showed that with Measure G uh, here in the city of Watsonville, where we voted by, by two-thirds to be able to dedicate more resources to not only law enforcement and our police department, excuse me, police department and our fire department, but also into Measure G was built in funding for programs for our young people mm -hmm. to be able to look at other ways to be able to tackle the issues and the challenges that they face through the Contigo program and the PAL program. And so we're investing in our young people, and I consider that public safety. Just as I've been an advocate for, uh, for uh, accessible for the, for the ADA community and public transportation, I believe that we should redo the Watsonville Transit Center as part of a key to our downtown revitalization. And at downtown revitalization, I was the advocate to be able to take Highway 152 from the state in a, in a manner called relinquishment so that we can have control of our own streets in the city of Watsonville. Any of those that face traffic coming from Green Valley and Maine to here this evening knows exactly when they were sitting at the stoplight waiting for it to happen, how important that can be. And I also believe the city should be able to enter into community partnerships and collaboration to be able to for prevention programs and, and educa education programs on healthy eating and healthy lifestyles because we can combat the diabetes rate. There are other issues as economic and development and jobs, and, and I believe that those are important, but working on the things that I've been attempting to do for the last four years, I want to continue moving forward in that direction. The Manabiao property and the restrictions on it are something that we need to look at, face the challenge, and advocate for change. Eduardo, what are the main issues in this campaign? I think um, jobs, 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 the economy. The economy is at the forefront. Everybody wants us to work at, at bringing um, more, more jobs. 
but it, but it also, like uh, Councilman Lover said, is access to education and partnering with the educational system, whether it be Cabrillo, the Power Valley. We need to partner up and work together instead of having this is my world and this is your world. We don't touch each other and don't bother me. It's about access, it's about to just even the fields for them to have access to play sports. It's about access, connecting the dots between the, uh, the Pajaro Valley Elementary Schools and the middle schools and the high schools with Cabrillo so they get more connected. Um, uh, uh, Watsonville High and Cabrillo are just a few blocks away. Why isn't there uh, some classes over at Cabrillo in partnership with the Pajaro Valley? Um, we, uh, um, we just need to partner up with the, with the county to bring more resources to our community. And I'm, just, and I'm not just talking about Bring, um, bring uh, low-income housing. I'm talking about real partnership with, where instead of just uh, putting uh, putting those kind of resources, putting some uh, uh, actually some infrastructure resources so we can attract uh, attract more business and, and, and more opportunities for uh, for our community, whether it be to bring in jobs or just to uh, just to be at equal with the north. So those are the things that I think at the forefront thing. And for uh, my district, it's the Highway 1, Highway 1, Highway 1. Because a lot of my people in my district um, work, work in Santa Cruz. They're traveling to um, UCSC jobs, to county jobs, to city jobs, to uh, just uh, all the jobs. So the, their, their local street is Highway 1. So we need, we need to work more and more to uh, make that, uh, uh, whether it's pieces or the whole together, um, widen it more so it takes a little bit more burden just to uh, to get home. Thank you. Daniel, related to the previous question, name two or three of your priorities for the future and if elected, how would you address them? Look ahead four years. Look ahead four years? I can barely remember where I left my keys. <laughs> uh, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I, I really think as a priority, as a, as, a city as a city government, the city of Watsonville is the most progressive city in the county of Santa Cruz. And by that I'm saying that we were able to look at ourselves and think forward. And we've been able to act on those things. When the plastic bag ban, can, ban excuse me, the plastic bag ban, which is still being argued up at the state level, we were on the forefront of being able to do those things. Looking at our broadband network, we need to be able to increase the accessibility because we're talking about bringing in real jobs, even in our downtown infrastructure. We need to move into this century. We need to be able to have the access that other communities have to be able to the exchange of data. And that allows our young people to become more exposed in their academic education to uh, resources and communication. So I, I believe that our young people are our asset in our community. 30% of our community is under 30 years old. So if you ask me what was a priority, we have to be able to invest in our young people so that they can invest in themselves. The city, we, we, have, we don't have a parks and recreation department. We have a parks and community services department because we can do different things outside of the box. That's what makes us progressive. So I believe that our young people are a priority. Mm -hmm. I believe that our transportation needs are a priority. Um, those of us that understand how, how the transportation works, 50% uh, of the people in Watsonville do not work in Watsonville. They have to travel somewhere. So regional cooperation and transportation is a priority also. And we really do need to be able to look at economic development and bringing in some real jobs with the property that we have. And that is the Manaviao property, so I believe that those are our priorities. Eduardo, name two or three of your priorities for Watsonville. And if elected, look forward for the next four years. How would you address these two or three issues? I think well, um, uh, working on youth issues and, and working with the school district to get more kids prepared for the future. Um, we are getting them prepared, but, uh, um, uh, but we need to prepare them in, in better ratios and, uh, and be better advocates for them. And so we can bring them back. We need to be connect the dots to bring them back. We have here Abel Sanchez that, uh, from our community that's running for uh, county school board, which is a perfect example of why we need more young kids to return back. He, um, he, uh, he went to a, a school outside the community, came back, and is now giving back to the community. So those are the, uh, the people that we need to attract because they're going to make the difference. They're going to be the future council members, 
future supervisors um, of this community, future teachers, um, because we need uh, we need more. A lot of our teachers are out of this area. We need we need to have more teachers from this area so they're connected to the community, uh, so they can be partners um, with that community, get the kids educated. I didn't grow up here in the Pajaro Valley. I grew up in Santa Cruz, um, and and when I lived in Santa Cruz, I had a few teachers a few blocks away that I could go uh, go uh, get to and go talk to if I had a question. So I want I want that for our kids. I want, the, I want their, them to have access to um, more education attainment. And how I'm going to work towards that is just working with the uh, school board force. We need to get a better partnership with them. Um, and, and we have really frank conversations about how we need to move forward and how we can all get connected. Thank you. No, name two or three of your priorities. And if elected, how would you plan to address them in the future? Thank you, Pedro. When I think about four years from now, I'm, I'm saddled with the responsibility of running for election again. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know, I, 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 will be, I will be allowed to do so, uh, but let's cross that bridge when we get there. In the meantime, I think we need a, a much more vibrant downtown. We, we need to uh, have a, a better relationship with employers and and. and maintain the employers we do have and retain those jobs, but we also need to reach out and attract new employers and employers that pay livable wages, employers that uh, help take care of the community, employers that support workers. And I think we need a, a better educational system too. I'm sorry we don't have a lot of contrast here today between the answers, and I'm sorry the other candidates for this uh, position didn't choose to show up here, but you know there, there, there's not always 100% agreement on the council, and that's why majority has to uh, rule, and so what I like to do is to try and help bid, bridge that gap and uh, bring people together and get things done, move to the future. You know, I, I really want to be a change agent. I want to see social justice take place in this community and a, and a better opportunity for my grandkids and my kids and all those thousands and tens of thousands of students that I've taught over the years because that will help reduce crime and that will help improve public safety and that will give people an opportunity for a better lifestyle and more help and, and we can grow our own. And so the priorities I see are maintaining a, a good environment and stimulating an economic opportunity for all. This is the last question, and you'll have one minute. Final statement that you want to make, and we'll start with Eduardo. I really appreci I would appreciate your vote. I want to keep the community moving forward. I need, I need your help and everybody's help educating our community. Yesterday I was at Fiestas Patras and, and a, a former council member, Oscar Rios, um, asked everyone who was able to vote and there was very little hands going up. Um, we need to change that around because um, a lot of people uh, can, uh, can become citizens but their unwillingness or their educational background doesn't allow them to. Uh, we need to uh, we need we need to have a machine out there to educate them and ha and so they can vote so they can make a difference instead of just saying instead of going on a lot of doors where there's families all around it and just one person can vote because they they need to make the difference and they need to be able to also stand up and say this is what I want so uh, it's giving them their their opportunity and their voice thank you very much and hopefully you can vote for them. Low. Final statement. Thank you. I want you to also vote for Eduardo, and I want you to vote for Dodge, too, because none of us get here by themselves. All right? None of us get here by ourselves. And even though I've had 30 years of uh, public leadership as an educator and a, and a councilman, I'm hoping to have at least, well, at least four more years. So let's just, let, we don't want to count our chickens before they're hatched, and I don't want to presume anything because, you know, a lot of stuff, there's always a lot of surprises in life. So I'm here to, to give it my all, 
to give it my very best, to try and always be on a majority uh, vote for progress, for the future, for good things to happen in this community, and to engage as many other people as we possibly can. I was also at the uh, Oscars event uh, the other day, and, and it was a striking that so many people in this community cannot vote or do not vote, and so, you know, voter registration's a big uh, goal of mine as well. I see I got another extra minute here, too. This is good. <laughs> <laughs> voter registration is really uh, one of the keys uh, to, to move the community forward and to energize folks and to get them engaged. There's too much apathy, too much indifference. We need to change that game plan. And so I'm here as a game changer and, and somebody who really wants to make good things happen. I hope that you'll support me, but I also want you to support these two other candidates here, and let's all move forward together. Danielle, final statement? One minute. One minute. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, everybody, for being here tonight. It, it, it acts as a good showing of Democrats uh, coming out this evening to be engaged in and what, what is the, the greatest uh, right privilege that we have in this country and that's the right to be able to vote. I'm very conscious of that. Recently as 1989 when the Supreme Court decision allowed to be able to change the way that we elect officials here in the city of Watsonville. It was a monumental and state an enormous statement that allowed rep members of the community that never had the opportunity to be able to participate in the system. I know that's why I'm here today. So I thank all those that came before me and all those that opened doors that maybe we don't know their names. We don't know Ravy Hill after Plaza V Hill. We, we don't know Waldo Rodriguez after the Rodriguez Center. But these are men, men and women in our community. Ma Kobos, I miss her greatly, you know. These are men and women in our community that have been able to Oh, you've been able to, to open up the doors for us. The gift. Although <laughs> they're able to open up the doors for us to participate today. What you see on the council majority as a representative of the overall community, a community that has elected myself, Eduardo Montesino, Felipe Hernandez, Karina Cervantes, Lowell Hurst, and last but not least, Assemblyman Luis Alejo. We have ascended to all levels of government across the state. Now is the not time for us when we're under attack by outside Tea Party interests. This is the time for Democrats to be able to stand up, move forward in a progressive manner to make Watsonville a shining example for the rest of the state of California. So thank you for the extra time. We have up to 10 minutes for questions. There can be questions. Or there if you don't want to, there can be no questions. It's up to you. <laughs> you want to move along. <laughs> Any questions? I have one. And since we just opened our campaign office here, and the voting power in Watsonville, the city of Watsonville, could be huge. How do you make that happen? How do you get those people to register? <coughs> how do you do? I mean, I'm serious. How do you go about it? I'll, I'll take a shot at that since, uh, you know, I've tried to own voter registration. <laughs> I've been out there passing out voter registration forms for 20 years. And some of those people actually do come out and vote. And once you can get them to register and remind them that it is election day, then you've got a shot at it. And so I think personal outreach, door to door, we, have, we probably need to do some kind of event and some kind of tabling too. But once folks vote, you know, then they then they're in the habit of it. Then they 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 breach that that threshold, and they'll do it again. And so we have to remind them that it's meaningful. That sometimes elections are very very close. You know, there's almost sixty thousand people in Watsonville, but only fourteen. 14,000, 15,000 yeah, registered, and of that, only a third of them vote. So it's really critical that we energize, and that's why I'm sorry we don't have more contrasts in this, in this room today, but we do have contrast out there in the street, and we just need to reach out more and 
create excitement and interest. Eduardo or Daniel? Daniel, Eduardo? Um, I think uh, uh, this is one of the places where, where I, I think we partner up with the schools. Have, when, they, when, they, when they bring the parents in for, for back to school night, why don't we have a table at every school? Whoa. Uh, and, 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 and just that. get and, and get organized. <laughs> but it's but it's also go, but it's also going to door to door, educating yeah. the, the uh, and educating no. why they should be citizens. Because a lot a lot of people can't become citizens; they just need to apply. But it's it's, it's having it, ha having them be aware mm -hmm. of how important it is for them to vote. Because they they think it's uh, voting is out of reach for them; it, uh, that it doesn't matter for them. But it does matter for uh, once. Once you get uh, once you get past it, and you tell them, this, this is the livelihood of your kids, and you put it in that in that world in that sentence, it, it becomes relevant to them, and that's where you can get a lot of uh, the interest and in the and you can get connected to the school to uh, um, to the adult dad so they can study for the for uh, for the test. So it's just connecting the dots and getting and getting more people uh, out there. Idea. That's good. Well, uh, along along those lines, I, I think that for those that might be able to watch this at a later date, um, that you have to understand in, the, in, in our community that when you take away for citizenship from the overall population, you take away from citizenship, and if a third of the population in the city of Watsonville is, is under 18, mm -hmm. a third of the population is ineligible to vote. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you have to, you, that's, that's a number that's very, very high, very real. So... Um, I do hear the criticisms from outside the committee, uh, community, but I think that that's something that we we can able to work on through the educate through just not the academic education, but a, pro a process where that uh, elections have changed. People don't vote. Oh, I'm giving my strategy away. <laughs> <laughs> elections have changed. Absentee ballots, 40% of the county almost votes by mail, which means they would serve their ballots earlier. So it becomes a whole different way to be able to reach folks, to be able to encourage them to participate uh, at, at the luxury of being at their living room table. And how do you, and how do you communicate those things? Mm -hmm. We do need, as Democrats, we do need to be able to reach out and, and touch people in different places that we've never done before. And I think with coming into it, and when 2016 will be the year of the woman, Oh, and come on, every year is the year. Uh, <laughs> this, this one, the, the possibility for a woman candidate on a presidential level will be very active in the Democratic Party. You're going to throw me out. It's more every day. <laughs> so I think that the leading into that, we need to be able to engage people in clubs. I would be willing, in representing this club, to move forward in educating and working with some schools and forming some Democratic clubs. And there's, uh, I think that those are the things that we could uh, attempt to do with um, citizenship drives, but we need to be able to be active as Democrats to be able to do that. And that's the challenge that's been facing in front of us. Other questions? Yes, for either the panel or the individuals. Okay, for the panel. Um, I'm Alan Hicks, and I'm the co-chair of the 21st Annual Peace and Unity March this year, which was started by Assemblyman Lisa Leto and Felipe Hernandez in 1994. Um, so, I'm, so I asked you, are you going to participate this year in the march? And also, um, what can the city do to support community efforts to end violence in the community? I'll go first. Thank you very much, Alan, for asking that question. I, I think that uh, I think that violence is very tried to you. As we've read in the papers and some of the sports figures lately, where violence is surfacing again in our community. That it's become it's becoming brought to attention. I think we, even with the news on around, when you see it, we become a little numb to some of the violence that happens around us. Uh, the Peace and Unity March, which I've been fortunate to participate in over, over the decades now, uh, we, and I'm glad you acknowledge Assemblymember Luis Alejo and Councilman Hernandez for being able to be part of the original members to be able to start that march. It's something that's become a tradition in this community. I, I know I'll be there. And I pledge to be there and assist them however I can. But I also think that it's very symbolic that you're going out, that the community is reaching out and increasing that to, to open a broad band of people that never participated before. I, I think that violence in our community is something that we that we, we have been addressing because we have to be able to take away some of the suppression angle that's happened previously and concentrate our efforts in prevention programs and education programs so that we can hit P 
people as young as 9, 10, 11 years old, that's where the violence starts. That's when they see the things that they see and, and, and carry on patterns that they witness. So I think for us in, in the city of Watsonville, we can, as a government, because we're the government, this is the face of government in the city of Watsonville, which you're looking at right now. True story. <laughs> that being said, I think, I think us as leaders can reach out and interact with the nonprofit world, with the private world, and with the public to be able to form a standard of having no, pe no, no violence days in our community and to be able to, to educate young people on how they can access the government back. Eduardo, did you want to say something? Yeah. Um, I, I know I, I, I will be there. Um, I, I texted I would be there. But in, on, on the course of, uh, of, of action for the city, um, we're, doing, we're doing a lot. Uh, now I've talked to a lot of people in the community. Um, we just have an abundance of a lot, a lot of a lot of young kids, and with the school district struggling with a lot of issues with, with the youth, we're struggling. Like I said, this is uh, ripe for a connection with the uh, with the school district. We're, we also have the PAL program that was instituted with uh, former Chief Medina. The PAL program. We have the Contigo program. We have the Youth Council. We have uh, we have uh, um, the Youth Council actually did a survey of how many programs for youth there uh, there was in the community. There's Hundreds, but nobody's getting connected uh, and forming partnerships with each other. Everybody's doing their own silo things, which, which is it's good, but it's also bad because we're not getting all, all uh, we're not, we're not getting all the resources resources together and putting everyone to work with each other so we can utilize or be more effective with uh, with each other. And uh, and uh, I encourage everyone to shop more in Watson because we need more resources to enhance some of these partners and to create more. Because we uh, we do, we do need to uh, make this relevant to the community, the youth, the parents. Because it's a connecting dot. It's not just resources for for uh, for the youth. Um, also, what um, Jenny, Jenny said the the uh, the rent serve program. Um, but we need just more 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 resources. But like I said, it's a holistic. It's not just not just youth programs, but all, but it's also the parent program, uh, like the papas program. It's um, it, it's just a marry of partnering with our nonprofit uh, programs to be able to provide a holistic uh, resources for them. Because um, uh, it, 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 it could be very minimal, but it could be very drastic. Like um, during the summer, a lot of people don't know that a lot of people don't get services because they're working in the fields. And because of the shortest, shortest of, uh, of workers in the community, you've seen, you've seen in the community where uh, buscando trabajadores, you see they're looking for workers because there's not enough of them. So what happens? Then people are working 12, 13 hours a day. So that is so, uh, and they're working six days a week, sometimes seven days a week. So they're not getting to their week appoint, uh, the week appointments. So they're not, uh, so they're not getting their 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 uh, their resources that they need for their kids. They're not getting to all these programs, and so uh, it's it's an impact, in, uh, especially in the summer. So it's that uh, we need to work more together. So we, even if, it, if if it is to provide those resources. In the fields, because they they need to they need to be connected during during the summer, because a lot of in the summers you see a lot a lot of the the, the, uh, the our our violence goes up because a lot of kids are home alone. A lot of kids are home alone because their parents are working, and uh, we provide some uh, some level of lunch lunch assistance in some of the parts as as we did during the summer with with uh, council's direction. We put uh, the summer lunch program in different places. Um, because we we know we know relevant this that this this is happening and a lot of kids don't have some food until the parents get home, so they're just buying the dollar for the Cheetos or whatever it is. So we just need to get more connected to the reality and 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 with the resources that we have and the resources that we need to put forward in. So I hope that answers some of the question. I think we just have one yeah. minute. Low. I'll keep it short. Sure. <laughs> I've been attending those uh, Peace and Unity meetings, the organizational meetings. I was in the very first Peace and Unity march. I've been in, I don't, I don't know how many uh, that I have attended, but uh, last year I was lucky and privileged to be up front holding the banner with the mayor and, and others. And so I think we, uh, what can the city do? The city needs to help create that climate of peace and unity. And we can do that through youth services and, and our uh, parks and community services.
but we can also do it by helping provide better jobs and more jobs for youth and a better liaison with the schools and just, you know, use our what media sources that we have and you're certainly welcome to come down and use our microphone for any for any three minute spot that you wish to help promote peace and unity. And so thank you for being here. And thank you for all three candidates. Thank you. Again, if you're a member, if you've attended two meetings within the last year, you can get your ballots in the back from Rosa. We'll next move from uh, City Council to the Santa uh, Cruz County Office of Education. Abel Sanchez. Here we go. Pedro, do you want us to get our ballots? Now we'll wait till everybody's through. Okay. Can't forget the vote. Abel Sanchez is running for the Santa Cruz County Office of Education. I think it's District 7. Yes, that's correct. Which covers from Santa Cruz, Watson, I mean, uh, from Beach uh, Street. From, and it goes into Monterey, a little bit of Monterey County. Uh, no, 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 no. It's just Santa Cruz County. Abed has an opponent who is a registered Republican. He's the only Democrat running for for this office. So why don't we get why don't we get going? And uh, Abed. Uh, how long have you been a Democrat, and who has endorsed you for this office? Sure. Well, good, good evening, everyone. First of all, it's, uh, it's a privilege and an honor to be. Why don't we hold up and can we sit down so Abel can get going? Mr. Give us a minute to. Okay, why don't we get started with, with Abel. How long have you been a Democrat and who has endorsed you for this office? So first of all, good evening everyone. It's an honor and a privilege to be here in front of you all today. Um, and the reason why I'm running is because I want to uh, encourage the youth. I feel like there's, there's a huge uh, population of, of young uh, students here that, that live among us. And if each one gave back to our community, our community would be a better place. So I want to I want to step up and I want to be an example. And even though I've only been a, a registered Democrat for four years, I've, I've been receiving a lot of support from from the, uh, our community, including um, uh, leaders from from local nonprofits. I've, I've, I've received endorsements from Marco Cruz, which is the CEO of a local food company. I've received endorsements from retired PBUSD teachers as as well as current ones. And uh, most recently, I received. Uh, uh, recruitment from the Santa Cruz County uh, Democratic Club. Abel, what are your qualifications for this office and why should the Pado Valley Cesar Chavez Democratic Club endorse your candidacy? So I am a Watsonville native. I was born and raised here and I am proud to say that I am a result of the, I went through local schools. You know, I went to Minty White Elementary School, I went to Yale Hall Middle School, and I graduated, graduated from Watsonville High too. And I'm proud of it, and if I could go back, I'd do it all over again. You know, there's a lot of people that don't think very highly of our schools, but, you know, I am proof that you, you can succeed. You know, you can attend these schools, you can get a good education, you can go off to college and get a really good job. So I, um, I'm proud of the fact, you know, I went off to, to UC Davis, graduated there, and then I came back. I came back here because this is home. This is where I feel connection. This is where my roots are. And not only do I just want to come back, but I want to give back as well. So I am here to, to prove, you know, to, to prove to, to the young uh, students that we have here, the young population, that the community does support uh, the students. That we do have a voice, that we do have an opinion that can be used and beneficial to, to, to the city. And, um, and that's why I am asking for the, your, your guys' endorsements as well. And I, I'm also qualified because I have extensive, extensive um, experience with children. My first check was actually given to me when I was teaching the students at Landmark, Landmark Elementary how to play the guitar, an after school program. 
I have tutored math and science after school as well. And um, I, when I was in Davis, I, I collaborated with the Farm to School program. And I was able to educate and help promote safety and healthy food choices in the lunch line. And um, most recently, I've, I've been an advocate for, for the foster youth here in our community. Ben, what are the main issues in this campaign for the uh, COE office? I think the, the biggest issue that um, we're facing right now in our education is just uh, the performance rates. There's um, the, the graduation, the, uh, the, the, the dropout rate needs to decrease, you know, and we need to be able to um, encourage uh, these, these, these students and help address these issues that are keeping us back from achieving these, uh, these success rates. And um, there's, there's dozens of different ways that you, we can combat this. But the, what I want to focus on is uh, on safe school, the school environments. In order for children to feel safe at school, they need to uh, make sure that, that they have the support from the, the teachers and the staff as well. Um, and I want to encourage the parent involvement as well. Uh, studies have shown that the more a parent is involved in uh, the student's education, the better that student does in school. And I also want to ensure that there's appropriate services for those that, that need them, you know, those that are in foster care or those that are, um, have special needs. If elected, you'll have four years. What would be your two or three priorities in this, in four years in the COE? Sure, okay. Things that you want to work with by yourself or with other members mm -hmm. in the COE? So to, to elaborate on the safe school environments, you know, uh, these past couple of years has been a huge uh, uptick in violence. There's uh, bullying and intimidation. Kids are scared to go to uh, school these days. You know, when, when you are in that environment where you don't feel safe, uh, you don't pay attention. When you feel intimidation, when you don't feel that you have that support, you don't want to go to school. So I feel if this is an issue that we can address, I feel that the performance will increase uh, of these students and the attendance will increase as well. And also going back to encourage, uh, encouraging the parent involvement, there's a lot of parents who don't feel like they can uh, give back to, to their students, uh, to, to, their, to their children. And I want to prove that everyone can. You know, that there's a lot of uh, parents here who don't, might not have an education, who might feel intimidated, but everyone can have a positive influence in, in, in their student's life. Uh, personally, you know, in my life, my I am a son of, of immigrants. You know, my parents don't have that education, but from day one, my mom put in my head that I have to go to college, that I have to go to college, that you study and you do, do well, perform well in school to go to college. And that's, that, that was ingrained inside of me, and there was no option, there was no plan B. So I did well in school, I performed well, and even though she didn't go to college, even though she couldn't help me with some of my high school homework, uh, she still provided that support and encouragement for me to be successful and to, to achieve that dream. And then going back to the foster youth and, and uh, those with special needs, the statistics are are scary. You know, of uh, the the dropout rates of the unemployment for, for for these groups, and we need to make sure that we can address their specific needs. We need to make sure that it's addressed at an early age, and that um, they have the support and resources that they need to be successful. Because everyone can uh, be successful and be a contributing part of, of our of our beautiful community. Thank you. Final statement. Anything else you want to tell us about yourself? Final statement. Something else that I want to add is I, I want to be uh, I want to advocate for agricultural careers as well. I want them to be promoted as a, uh, a good career. I know it's it's a struggle with many. I personally I, I struggled with that. You know, because a lot of people when they think of agriculture, they think of backbreaking work. They think of field work, and everyone wants their children to do better. You know, to to, to be a doctor, to be a lawyer. But the ag industry is huge. You know, it's not only field work. You know, but it's uh, there's there's dozens of different jobs in in that sector in that field. And I again, I am one of those success stories. You know, I went off to UC Davis, a really good ag school, and I'm living and working here in the ag industry, and I'm enjoying it. And and I have that that experience because um, in the two or three jobs that I've had, they're they're they're, they're suffering. They're suffering to find bilinguals who are who are into agriculture <coughs> or into plant sciences because. For whatever reason, it's, it's just not promoted as, as a respectable career. And uh, again, I just want to be a, a voice for, for the youth, and I want to encourage everyone to, to give back to the community. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any questions?
Ravel. Uh, specifically, what is your job now? What are your experiences have you had? Okay. So specifically now, I am a food scientist. So I, I work with Superior Foods and um, as a food microbiologist, uh, dealing with food microbes. Uh, I don't want to bore you too much. <laughs> but um, uh, food, and food quality assurance and food safety. That, that's what I do for 40 hours a week. But in uh, after work, what I really enjoy doing is um, getting back and volunteering with uh, CASA of Santa Cruz County. I've been doing that for about a year now, and uh, just advocating for the foster children and, and their needs uh, here locally. I have a question for you. That, uh, you mentioned that Pajaroi in the high school district and other Santa Cruz counties can fail in a sense of um, the dropout rate. Uh, being that you're going to be in the county office as a board member, how do you going to try to el eliminate that failure that those, the new school district has done? How are you going to do it? Okay. How do I increase the, the graduation mm -hmm. rates? How can you fix it? Okay. Again, I, I feel like we need to look at the, the needs that, that our community has. And um, specifically, there's a, there's a huge uh, ESL population. Okay. I feel like we need to focus on providing uh, education in, in, in the format that, that satisfies their, their needs. I feel, again, student, uh, parent involvement. The more parents are involved in, in their students' education, the better that they will perform in school, uh, the better encouragement that they have, and just promote the different resources. I want to be able to provide uh, and, and promote all these uh, different programs that we have in place so that people and students can take advantage of it and, and succeed, just like I did. Okay. Other questions? Good question. Please you describe your district. What parts of the Pajaro Valley are included in the district that you're running for? Sure. Just so, we all know. so District 7 is, is the majority of Watsonville. It's, it's broken up a little weirdly, but it's north of Beach Street, and then it's east of uh, Brewington. No, west of Brewington, to the ocean. And it goes all the way up to, to Carlitos. To, to the end of, of uh, for you. But it covers some of the districts, because I know I'm in your district, so it covers Montesinos and possibly Lowell's district, I think. Yeah. Other questions for Ben? Thank you Thank very you. much. Thank you. Now we're moving to the supervisor's race. Supervisor in District 4. <laughs> He's running against a Republican and we won't mention his name. <laughs> oh, I'll let him know who it is. <laughs> There are two candidates for supervisor in District 4. Two of the candidates were invited to attend this session. Terry answered right away that he would be here. The other candidate never replied to my request on three occasions. Not once, not twice, but three times. Nothing. Anyway, with that, we'll start with Terry Medina. Thank you. What are <laughs> the trick is that you're still clapping at the end of this. <laughs> <laughs> Who has endorsed you for this office and why do you want to run for supervisor? Well, first of all, thank you for inviting me. And I am dismayed that my opponent chose not to participate tonight. It makes it very difficult to demonstrate our differences. Uh, I have been a Democrat for 16 years from 1966 to 1982 and recently re-registered in July. I am so fortunate to have uh, approximately 450 contributors to my campaign, uh, 100 individuals and, and associates, and I think critical for our meeting tonight uh, Endorsers are Representative Sam Farr, Assemblyman Luis Alejo, uh, Sheriff-elect Jim Hart, uh, the current Sheriff Phil Wowak, Roger Wildy, who is a retired uh, lieutenant, was a candidate 
uh, sheriff's candidate has uh, recently endorsed me. Michael Watkins, the county uh, superintendent of schools. Uh, Zach Friend, uh, uh, who is uh, the chair of the board of supervisors. Our mayor, Karina Cervantes, Lowell Hurst, Edward Mondesino, Trina Kaufman Gomez, the Santa Cruz Sentinel, the GLBT Alliance, Baymec, and the Democratic Women's Club. There's a larger list that we have passed out uh, for you to peruse. Terry, what are your qualifications for office? And why should the Ottawa Valley says our Chavez Democratic Club endorse your candidacy? Well, you've known me in Watsonville for almost 30 years. My wife and I raised our son here. Uh, I have 43 years in law enforcement. Most people don't remember that I was with the district attorney's office twice, the sheriff's office, and the Watsonville Police Department for 27 years, 20 years as the chief of police, the longest tenured chief of police in Watsonville's history. In order to do that, I worked with four city managers from different points of view, over 50 council members, and I don't have to tell you that uh, not all council members agree on everything and you have to work with everybody's point of view. Um, six unions and two employee associations. Uh, I was a labor negotiator for management and what most people don't know is that I negotiated as president of the Deputy Sheriff's Association on the labor side for over two years uh, early on. Uh, in the nonprofit sector, I have a long history in working with nonprofits, the Parent Center, the Community Foundation, Pajaro Valley Prevention and Student Assistance. Thank you for being here, Jenny. The Independent Square, I'm still the treasurer of that board. Community Hospital, uh, the, I was appointed by the Board of Supervisors to the Oversight Committee to um, review the dissolution of the Watsonville Redevelopment Agency. Very difficult task. Uh, you may know me as an auctioneer for 25 years. Uh, I've done 8 to 13 auctions every single year. Uh, yeah, and I'm going to figure out how much money that is pretty soon, but it's a lot. <laughs> I'm a Watsonville Rotary member for 20 years, and I was the president in 2010. And I'm a partner in two private businesses. How's that work for you? Good. <laughs> Three, what are the main issues in this campaign? Uh, well, the next question is, why should you endorse me, or do you want me to go to the other one? Go to the other one. We can come back to that one. <laughs> uh, the main issues in the campaign, as I see them, is number one, leadership. That's why I am running. That is the solid reason why I'm running. Our current supervisors continues to run on popular ideas that he knows has no chance of getting... Uh, uh, voted uh, a vote passed uh, barely can get a second um, I could give you a number of examples um, but but just let me tell you this he puts forth uh, an idea and doesn't have the ability doesn't understand that you need to persuade two other members on that board to understand your point of view and be willing to vote for it so consequently in our district, we don't move the ball forward at all for our constituents. I'm going to go to the past a minute. If Ray Belgar and Gary Patton can work together on land use issues, then we should have a supervisor that can work together on a lot of other issues. If elected uh, supervisor, I will work with the Board of Supervisors to accomplish the goals of the district instead of symbolically voting uh, against bills that I know have no chance uh, to pass. I will be a supervisor who will provide a voice to the South County, who will work energetically, proactively, and collaboratively with all the stakeholders, as other supervisors, county department heads, leaders, and allied governments. Uh, we're not in a bubble here, and I will ensure that our district has representation on our commissions, of which my opponent has left empty. The Latino Affairs Commission has had nobody on it. That is a travesty in our community. The fire service has no commissioners appointed to it. The seniors, he champions seniors and he has nobody on the seniors commission. 
So when I, if you can elect me, I will fill those positions. Immigration as it relates to jobs, economic growth in the Pajaro Valley, it's a significant issue, and not only for us, the surrounding region as well. It's a major agricultural producer in the region and the nation, and I would collaborate with our ag sector, our local elected officials in our region, including Assemblyman Alejo, Mr. Mark Stone, uh, Senator Bill Monning, Congressman Farr, to ensure that we have the labor not only for farm workers, but that we retain people who graduate from our universities rather than send them back to wherever they came from, is to keep them here to generate jobs for us. Uh, water, huge issue. Um, obviously, it far exceeds the boundaries of the 4th District, but as your supervisor, I will reach out to all the other stakeholders, the PBWMA, the city, the county, and other water districts, to basically provide some storage. That's what the immediate need right now is storage for water that we are recycling. And the second is to provide enough funding at all of these levels to really understand if desal can work uh, for us. And it probably would be the, the Moss Landing side of the desal rather than the Santa Cruz side. Name three of your priorities for this district. And if elected, how would you plan to address them in okay. the coming four years? Sure. So, so, you know, I just told you about the big three issues, but what's important to me is uh, senior issues. Uh, fill senior commissions, as I just said, uh, which hasn't been done by, appoint, uh, by my uh, opponent. And I will protect seniors uh, from this outrageous scams that happen to them every day by phone and on the computer. I cannot tell you how many people have fallen prey to these scams. They're afraid to admit it. They do report it. And it's going to take a concerted effort with my experience in the DA's office, the Sheriff's Department, and the FBI. I'm a graduate of the FBI National Academy. When I was the chief, I got the FBI to investigate and follow up on a number of complaints that we have right here in Watsonville. And believe it or not, after about a year and a half, some of our uh, uh, older people got their money back, which is actually even surprising to me. Mental health and health services for children and women. Um, I will work with the Criminal Justice Council, the mental health professionals, the Mental Health Advisory Board. By the way, my opponent has nobody appointed to the Mental Health Advisory Board uh, to address these mental health solutions regarding children and women's health issues. Uh, I make this a a top priority in the county budget and support women's health initiatives irrespective of religious beliefs. And I would, uh, as I said, would fill those commission appointments. Lastly, crime. I work with the Sheriff's Department starting in January when they're putting their budget together, not in June when the budget is already done and you're just having hearings on the budget. Um, and so part of that preparation with the Sheriff's Office is to get some funding from the state uh, and put back the Regional Agricultural Crime Unit. There were five deputies in that specifically to patrol uh, our ag lands in the unincorporated areas to make it safe for everybody. Final statement? Oh, not other, not other issues. Final statement is pretty short. <laughs> so the final statement is really this. I think if you look at my history of success and experience in being able to pull people together to solve issues that are very contentious at times, that we can make short steps first, and then we'll make big steps. And then we will be speaking in District 4 with a voice that people cannot ignore and that I want to be part of. But one of the reasons that I'm here is I want you to be part of it. I will come back here and say, look, we have an issue. What is your opinion? I will go to the Farm Bureau and ask them to be involved in positive things, uh, whether it's ag economy or non-ag economy, because we need them both. It's very, very important. 
I ask that you endorse me. I ask that you uh, endorse me as a group, as individuals, and that you vote for me on November 4th. We have time for questions. Any yeah. questions? Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah. With your um, background in law enforcement, um, how do you see the issue of youth violence, and how can specifically how can community work with law enforcement or sure. with the government in general? Sure. So first of all, just let me um, give you all a reality on violence. Violence has been declining for a long time. Uh, over 20 percent, 25 percent in my 20 years just as chief, and Chief Manny Solano has dropped it even more. So good things are happening, mm -hmm. but they are overshadowed by senseless, you know, high-profile violence. So one of the things that we have done over a period of time to reduce that kind of violence is PVPSA, which started to work within the school district and the city at people in junior high school. I was on that board. Jenny's the, the, uh, the CEO of that. And now we have to be looking at elementary school kids because teachers do recognize when young people start to need help. And if we can empower uh, that help with some joint funding so that we can reach these kids uh, before <coughs> things start to get out of hand, we will continue to have success. The second most important thing in my mind is this. We have a lack of coordination between the mental health professionals and law enforcement. Uh, and we have to overcome that. And we, there is a model that'll, that shows us. It's called BOSTA. We started BOSTA years and years ago, broad-based apprehension, suppression, treatment alternatives. Um, and a, a quick answer, when we formed BOSTA, it had all of the components. And somebody earlier mentioned we, would, we were very siloed. We all came together, but we didn't share. We didn't case manage like they do in the medical model. And uh, a deputy district attorney uh, went to a state legislature and said, we got to change the law on communication. And the law was changed so that in these task forces, in these groups, we now freely share information about individuals at risk. It sounds so simple, but it was so hard to accomplish. We have not yet accomplished that to the degree necessary between law enforcement and mental health. And when we do that, uh, fewer people suffering from mental health will have access to guns. And we hopefully will identify them before something triggers them to go out and shoot somebody in broad daylight <coughs> for no apparent reason. So those two things, if we can work on it and provide funding for it, uh, will reduce violent crime even more. Yeah. Just, uh, we've heard a lot about flood insurance, and I think that issue of parts has been put put to bed for a few years. What, I was also, what I'd like to hear your thoughts on are, you know, if we have a flood, what's in place in terms of preparedness and taking care of folks that are in the lower lands that might get flooded? Sure. So uh, the county... The county uh, has a disaster preparedness plan that uh, coordinates um, public works, the sheriff's department, um, PG&E, and uh, the people that do sheltering. So as early as we can notify people uh, and, we, and we make a declaration of evacuation, first of all, it's very quick. Uh, to start moving people out of the danger area. You know what the problem is? Anybody want to hazard a guess? No rowboats. Happened in this, it happens in the city, too. When I was uh, working in the city, disaster preparedness, you say, the flood is coming, we want you to leave. 
Nobody leaves. <laughs> Nobody wants to go. I'm staying here. I'm going to protect my house. So we have to do uh, a better job of uh, getting people to understand the threat. Um, and it can be done. Not too long ago, there was the, the uh, issue of the tsunami. Huge media, tsunami, tidal wave. Uh, everybody got in their car and drove up to Mount Madonna. <laughs> So, but there are plans in place to take care of that. Uh, the trick is to coordinate between the county and the city. Um, the city really has about 7,000 people in harm's way. Uh, the county has fewer. But if we don't work together, uh, bad things can happen. Other questions for yes, Terry yeah. Lupin? Yes, uh, how do you feel about the immigration issue and, and would you support the some kind of program to legalize some of our citizens that we know are here illegally. Yeah. Um, you, you know, most people don't realize that the United States Senate passed a bipartisan immigration bill a year and a half ago. Uh, it was acceptable to everybody. It got to the Congress, the United States Congress, and it has been absolutely stymied. So I tend to support uh, the Senate's version of that bill. Uh, it does create a pathway to citizenship. Uh, I think that the pathway takes an awful long time. It's like 12 years. Uh, but at least it's a pathway. It's a beginning. Um, I, I also su support this idea. We have this crisis right now where, where, where all the kids from Guatemala, uh, not as many from Mexico, but from Mexico and other uh, countries uh, towards our, our southern borders. And so we have them in detention centers and they deserve a hearing. It's a legal process. And if we can spend a billion dollars a week fighting wars that we probably should be fighting, I won't get into that argument, but we should be able to hire enough lawyers and representatives to have um, these, what is it now, 50,000 kids have a hearing so that w they can be adjudicated. Uh, it is estimated that 20% would, would be allowed to remain and at least the others would be out of a detention and uh, get some uh, help on, on the way back. So, um, you know, you got to work with Congressman Farr, uh, Senator Feinstein, and uh, locally we we got to push people in Congress to try to get this bill out of being stuck in the mud. One final question, Felipe. Uh, there's an intergovernmental inter agency meeting between PBUSD yeah. and the city, but in recent years, uh, there's been no representation from the mm -hmm. from supervisorial representation. In order to make gains for South County, there needs to be collaboration. What would you propose? Well. Uh, First of all, if invited, I would be at every one of those uh, because I think it's critically important. PVUSD, the city, and the county will work together on so many issues, and PVUSD working on some of the issues we're talking about violence is through mm -hmm. PVPSA. So we have to have a seat at the table. I didn't know that we, we don't have a county representative there. I don't know if he's just not going or he hasn't been invited. Uh, I would push to get myself there. Uh, and, and, you know, I have a great record working with PVUSD and the County Office of Education. Uh, you know, part of, uh, part of County Office of Education is the ROP, uh, mm -hmm. ROP program. And uh, th those are things that we can talk about how to improve that at that particular board level. And I, I, I'd love to be part of that. Thank you very much, Terry. This concludes the endorsement form. If you haven't got the ballot, be sure and get your ballot and, and mark it. And uh, give it to Lupe and Rosa. And I think now we'll move into the, uh, the business part of the meeting. You want to do the meeting right now? Start. First count for votes. Yeah. So if you haven't voted, be sure and vote. I need all the ballots. All the ballots. Um,
don't have one and you think you deserve one, come and see us. We have 21 members from the Pado Valley Cesar Chavez Democratic Club voting. This is the only Democratic club in South County. Uh, celebrated its 10th anniversary just this past month. Uh, the club has decided to endorse in the, see if I get it right, 3rd District Lowell Hearst. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> in the 4th District, Eduardo Montesino. In the 5th District, Am I correct? Daniel Dodd. For the County Office of Education, the club has endorsed Abel Sanchez. For District 7. And for the Supervisorial Race, the club has endorsed uh, Terry Medina. So these are our endorsements. Uh, Maria and Felipe put them on the uh, piece of paper. I know where they're gonna go. <laughs> and these are the two co-chairs of the of the club. So here are the the votes, and uh, thank you very much, all of the candidates for participating. Let's get busy and elect all of these uh, individuals to the respective office. Thank you very much. Okay, one final announcement. One final announcement. So for all the candidates and all the club members, we have now the Center for Change Democratic Headquarters. It's located in 510 Main Street. We got the key last Friday. Right. So it's available to all the endorsed candidates. Mm -hmm. right. Thank you. And that, it is next to... Domino's Pizza. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so you can't miss it.